Two thumbs got bored during a meeting and decided to shave during that meeting. This guy. Uh, welcome to Fast Facts Live. I am Dan O'Keefe, your quiz master of ceremonies, and we got a fun show for you today. And fun stands for fun, un, mm. But the way that we're scoring today, we've changed a little bit. We want to make sure that Charty, our cave troll who somehow broke in and now is the use of two laptops can keep track of your scores as best we can so we're changing the scoring up as i lead you into the next slide so we what we're asking you to do is instead of sending it in after every question we want you to track it in one text for each round so for the first question you number it number one in the text you put your answer second one in the same text you number it number two Put your answer, same for three, same for four, same for five. And please label the round that it is at the beginning. So when we go into round one, which say round one is movies, label the round movies. So that we can easily keep track of you and make sure that we don't have any errors in scoring. And so that everything just runs quicker. But before we actually get into the game, one shout out to Gam Pops, who have been doing it this way the whole time. Uh, and they are much older than us, which means they are much wiser than us which means that they should be running the show instead of us idiots. And speaking of us idiots, I am Dan O'Keefe, as I said before, the producer, the man who's behind all this. Tom, say hello. Hi. And Charty, if you looked at the camera, everybody would turn to stone because of your snake hair. So if everybody is ready, if everybody is good to go. Do you want to hear the team names? Yes, I do want to hear the team names. All right. We've got Anita's Prodigal Prodigy. Uh, I'm doing it again. You do headphones on and it's delayed. It's oh, messing no. me up. <laughs> All right, I've got Anita's Prodigal Progeny, Bambus, Chicken Dinner, Cullowins, 
Desilu. Oh, Doc, Desilu. Doc Sportello. Iglesias. You, David. Gampops. Goats. Governing board of the Anarchy Club. Han Flying Solo. Mama Bear. Operatives. Quiz Cats. Written House, in quotes. Rizzo Fangirls. Ronoid's Two Thirds Negative, mm. which is good to hear. That is good to hear. Spanish Inquisition. Spotted Cows. Team Coop. Texas Tornadoes. The Realist McCoy. And Turd Ferguson. Nice. So that means that we still have every returning champion from the previous three weeks. It is. Texas Tornadoes, they won the first week. Ronoids, when they were all positive, they won the second week. They did not win the third week, but they were still coughing. Maybe they'll win this week. And last week, the Quiz Cats won after making a heroic jump up from near the bottom the first week. But the Texas Tornadoes, they have tumbled down the staircase, and they finished in the cellar last week. Hopefully they don't finish in the cellar this week. Hopefully nobody does. You all tie for first, and we don't know what to do after we go after our first tiebreaker. But before we do that, let's go into our first round. And our first round is Wonka Vision. That's right. This category is all about that classic film, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Not Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. We're talking about the 70s one. If you're thinking about the Tim Burton, Johnny Depp one, get out of here. We don't want you here. We only want the originals, the OGs, as the kids say. And I said that in the worst way possible. Moving on to question number one. Who is the third child to have a mishap after they sing us a song? You have 30 seconds. Keep track of your answer. Don't send it in until after the category is over. As the third child in my family, I have all the mishaps, but I never sing a song, and that's a lie. Question number two, what color is the hair of the Oompa Loompas? 30 seconds. Before we move on to the next question, I just want to remind you, please don't send in your answers until the end of the category. Keep track of them and send in all five in one single text. That way it's easier for all of us. And that way, maybe if as later questions come up, you may think, oh, no, I actually got the first one wrong. You can go back and change it. So really, it's a win-win is the reasoning that I'm going to give you. So... Please send in your answers after the end of the category. As we move on to question number three, which is, what food company funded the film as a big old commercial for candy? You have 30 seconds. Come with me and we'll be moving on to the next question. How many golden tickets were circulated? 30 seconds.
And there's one question left in this category, which we'll call the glass elevator category, because that's all I know about the sequel. What European country was the film shot in? Which European country was the film shot in? 30 seconds. And that is the end of our Willy Wonka category. We're going to take a quick break so that we can fix a slight technical issue that we have on our end. But be sure to send in all five answers now in one text. And tell us if you want to do double or nothing, if you think that you did well. Or if you're really crazy and think that you did terribly and really want to go hard for the zero. We'll be back in a little bit. Stay tuned. And we're back from that short break. Hopefully, everything is going well on this end. If it's not, that would be sad. So, we're going to move on to the next category, and this category was inspired by me watching a YouTube video. This round is called Your Love is Like a Roller Coaster, Baby, Baby. I want to ride. It's all about roller coasters. Exactly what it says on the tin. Now let's go into the first question in the category. King Daka, the world's tallest roller coaster, is within the Six Flags Great Adventure theme park, which is located in what northeastern state? I'll repeat it. King Daka, the world's tallest roller coaster, at over 400 feet tall, is within the Six Flags Great Adventure theme park, which is located within which northeastern state? You have 30 seconds. My favorite northeastern state is plasma. Moving on to question number two. Stop! Go back! Question number two, here we go. The world's first roller coaster, which opened in 1885, was called the Switchback Railway. What historic theme park was it in? Again, the world's first roller coaster, the Switchback Railway, opened in 1885. What historic theme park was it in? 30 seconds. Switchback Railway sounds so cool. Like, it's it's just like, yeah, Switchback Railway. railway. That's the SeaWorld version of it. The Switchback Railway. <sighs> I should get paid for this. Question number three. The first tubular steel roller coaster opened at Disneyland in 1959 and is still running today. What ride is it?
You heard that? The Steel Coaster is still running to this day. We'll find him, and we'll catch him. Question number four. The Little Dipper, a historic children's roller coaster, was relocated to Six Flags Great America from what historic theme park whose slogan was, It's about fun! 30 seconds. The Little Dipper, like Dippin' Dots, is the ice cream of the future. And the final question in the roller coaster category. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter is a themed land located at what cinematic resort? The Wizarding World of Harry Potter is a themed land located at what cinematic resort? I wish it was at RKO Picture Studios, but they are not in business anymore. 30 seconds. And that comes to a conclusion. Our ride has pulled back into the station for round two, which means that it is time again to take a quick little break. We will be right back. Please send in your answers. Let us know if you want to do double or nothing. And... And we're back, Fast Facts, live. To give you a brief technical update about what's happening, a mice got into Tom's laptop. So that's why things got choppy. The mice were chewing the wires. Charty just looked at the mice, and now we have some nice stone paperweights of mice. So that's nice. So hopefully, the quality may have dipped a little bit, but there shouldn't be any more lag, and we should be good to go. It's difficult to make a television show in your apartment. <laughs> studio apartment tom this is the big leagues so with that let's go to the answers for our first two rounds and the first round was of course wonka vision willy wonka and the chocolate factory first question was who was the third child to have a mishap and the answer to that is of course veruca salt which is what my mom wanted to name me but she was talked out of it i don't know for the life of me why anyone would have talked her out of that Question number two, what color is the hair of the Oompa Loompas? That's right, it's green. 
Question number three, what food company funded the film as a big commercial for candy? It is the company that owns Gatorade, and that probably didn't help you at all, but you know what it is. It's Quaker Oats. Quaker Oats. Question number four, how many golden tickets were circulated? You had to give us a number. If you gave us anything other than a number, then you don't know what numbers are. And that means that the answer, of course, is one, two, three, four, five golden tickets for the five children. And the final question in the Willy Wonka category, what European country was the film shot in? I guessed Hungary. That was incorrect. I think I was just hungry. The answer was, of course, Germany. And before we move on to the answers to the next round, I just want to say, Grandpa Joe, you could walk the whole time. You could have gotten a job. What were you doing? You should have gotten up from that bed. You didn't need to be in bed with those 48 other dead people. Not dead yet, just old. Grandpa Joe is the reason that Willy Wonka cannot be trusted. Anyway, moving on to the next category. Your love is like a roller coaster, baby. That's right, it's the question all about amusement parks and roller coasters. Question number one, King Dakka, the world's tallest roller coaster, is located in Six Flags Great Adventure. In what state? That state of depression is New Jersey. Question number two, the world's first roller coaster, which opened in 18... Roller coaster? I just heard a little California there for a second. Was opened in 1885, and it was called the Switchback Railway. What historic theme park was it in? That was in, of course, Coney Island. The third question is, what tubular steel roller coaster opened at Disneyland in 1959, and it's still running today? That is the Matterhorn Bob Sleds. There's also a basketball hoop in the Matterhorn, in the little... Uh, attic i don't know what to call it the little inside part of the mountain and also there's a basketball hoop inside the real matterhorn it's where the dwarves live charty's giving me the hand to speed it up so i'm gonna slow it down no the little dipper historic children's roller coaster is now at six flags great america where was it originally it was of course at kitty land which is now a costco and question number five the wizarding world of harry potter is a themed land at what cinematic resort RKO Radio Pictures Universal Resort in Florida. Technically, not in Orlando. Wait, I meant to say Hollywood. I'm just going to move on. Anyway, those were the answers to the first two rounds. We don't give you a score yet. We save that for until the last round. And with that, we move on to our third category, the category that Charty said was too hard. So enjoy. Famous relatives. First question. Anderson Cooper and Timothy Oliphant are both members of what historically prominent family whose name also graces a Southern university? You have 30 seconds. Ha! We were having a little backstage talk there. The answer to this is Alabama, the University of Alabama. No! Question number two. Frances Ethel, sister of Mary Jane and Dorothy Virginia Gum, is better known by what festive name? I'll say it again. Frances Ethel, the sister of Mary Jane and Dorothy Virginia Gum, is better known by what festive name? And for a third time, just to be very clear, what is Frances Ethel Gum better known as? You have 30 seconds. I just want to give a quick shout out to my cousin Amy, who complimented me on my socks. These are Guinness socks. They have the little Guinness drinking toucan on them. I got them as a gift. <laughs> I got them from Charty. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> anyway, moving on to question number three. She's going to shield her its wrath. 
CNN anchor Chris Cuomo and New York Governor Andrew Cuomo are brothers, as you may know from their recurring CNN comedy show, from the Cuomo basement. What was their father's name, who was also the governor of New York? You have 30 seconds. Tom sang the countdown coming back into this one, and I wish you could have heard how pure his voice was. There was so much joy. Question number four. Tony Curtis and Janet Leigh's daughter had her acting a acting debut in 1978's Halloween, and she also won a Golden Globe for her role in True Lies. Who is she? Aha! Tony Curtis, best known for his role as Stony Curtis on The Flintstones. And finally, question number five. Catherine Martha Houghton was a suffragette. Who was her daughter, known for roles in The Philadelphia Story and On Golden Pond, and was named the greatest female movie star of all time by AFI in 1909? That wasn't the correct way to say that, but I'm going to just, you go, answer it. And that is the end of our famous relatives category, which means that we are not going to take a quick break. We're going to move straight on to the next category because we don't have any technical difficulties. Knock on wood for now. As we move on to the next category, it is boy bands, and this is our picture round. In this category, we will show you an album cover, and what we want you to do is send us both the name of the album and the boy band. If you get the album right and the boy band wrong, one point. That would be really impressive. If you get the boy band right and the album name wrong, one point. If you get both right, that's two points. So, I hope you're ready. All these albums are boy band related. So, for some of you, it may be easy. For my parents, it won't be. So, let's move on to the first album. Hope you got that one, love. Here's album number two. I really have to restrain myself from singing songs from these albums as we're looking at them. That would give you too much of a hint. Anyways, number three.
Album number four, 30 seconds. And last one, 30 seconds. And that brings us to the end of our boy band and boy band album category. Despite my fighting for it, we were not allowed to add the album Five, spelled Five I V E by the band Five, also spelled Five I V E. And with that, we will go again to a quick break while we tally up some scores. And then when we come back, we will reveal the answers to the third category and the fourth category. And we will move on to our fifth category, which is our toss-up round. So stay tuned. We will be right back with some more Fast Facts Live. Oh, hi. Welcome back. Or if you're just joining us, boy, you are going to be confused. Moving on to the answers for category three. That category was famous relatives. And to the one person who texted me that this category was too hard and all these people were a million years old. I just want to let you know, Anderson Cooper and Timothy Oliphant, they're not at least 80. They're probably younger than that. I don't know how old people are. So, the first one, Anderson Cooper and Timothy Oliphant are both members of what historically prominent family whose name also graces a Southern University? They are, of course, Anderson Cooper and Timothy Oliphant. Vanderbilt. They also have a bunch of houses. Vanderbilt houses. There's a Wikipedia page. It's very interesting. Question number two, Frances Ethel Gum. What was she better known as? Uh, I'll give you a hint. If you looked somewhere over the rainbow, you would figure out that her name is Judy Garland. Charty has given us a weird look. So we're going to move on to question number three. CNN anchor Chris Cuomo and New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, they are brothers. Who's their dad? It's a him. Mario Cuomo. Is there something happening with the stream? Okay. Just making sure. Uh, yes, Mario Cuomo, former New York governor. Question number four, Tony Curtis and Janet Leigh's daughter had her acting debut in Halloween, and she won a Golden Globe for True Lies. Who is she? She, of course, body switched with Lindsay Lohan and never got back, so Lindsay Lohan is actually Jamie Lee Curtis. It really is a Freaky Friday. And finally, question number five, Catherine Martha Houghton was a suffragette. Who was her daughter in those movies that I said and was named the greatest female Star of all time in 1999, that is Catherine Hepburn. Catherine Hepburn. Hope you got all those right. If you didn't, too bad. And moving on to category number four, boy bands. My parents, I'm sorry that I've disappointed you as a son. This album, what is it? This is a fun British boy band. They got their start on the X Factor. They like staying up all night. Because they are 
One Direction. And the album is, of course, Up All Night. If you got both of those right, congrats. You were 12 when this album came out. Question number two. Ah, who is this all-white boy band? They are my fire, my one desire. This album came out in 1999, which is right around the turn of the millennium by the Backstreet Boys. Question number three. Oh, look at that. Justin Timberlake, he's got his ramen hair. J.C. Chazay, he was the other lead singer. There are also three other members of NSYNC. Oh, no, they look like they're like marionettes. There are strings attached. No, there are no strings attached. And this is NSYNC's second album. Question number four. Huh. This one is probably a stumper for some of you. Maybe maybe something you don't even recognize who is this nickelodeon looking band you're right they are nickelodeon they are big time rush and the album is the initials btr and finally if you were a child in the late 80s early 90s or just able to keep track of pop culture at that time you may know who this is uh donnie Wahlberg is a band member as is Somebody who I can't, I was thinking Nick Carter, but no, he was in the Backstreet Boys. No, this is New Kids on the Block, and this is their album, Hangin' Tough. We would have given you a thousand bonus points if you said 30th anniversary. You would have won. We would have shut the game down. We would have given you a cookie. We have a lot of, we all baked recently, so we would give you a lot of cookies. I hear my sweet dulcet tones coming from Tom's phone, and that, ooh, I love hearing it. And that is the end of the answers for categories three and four, which means that it's time to move on to our fifth and final category of Fast Facts Live. And that category is our toss-up category, as Tom always subtitles everyone's favorite category. And the first question in toss-up, always, a, what is this type of animal group called? What is a group of flamingos called? You have 30 seconds. Aha! A group of flamingos is called a suburban front yard party. Question number two. Boeing Air Transport, later United Airlines, hired flight attendants who were also registered in what profession? You have 30 seconds. Ah, uh, well, Tom, I, I guessed registered real estate agents. <laughs> that was very wrong. <laughs> Question. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying, I'm not. The toss-up category is... Woo! Question number three. The first NBA-licensed video game released in 1989 was titled Lakers vs. Blank and the NBA Playoffs. Who was the other team? I need to give a shout out to my uncle Tom because I already shouted out my cousin Amy and he was upset that he wasn't shouted out in the famous relatives category. He's not famous, he just likes the NBA. Oh, I'm giving the I'm being given the signal. Wrap it up. Lakers versus Lakes. Question number four. Which international airport in the United States has regularly scheduled flights to Area 51? Not the first 50 areas. No flights go there. Just Area 51.
Speaking of Area 51, did you see that the U.S. government just, like, said that there are UFOs and aliens? They just released footage? <laughs> That's cool. And the last question in our toss-up category. What is the largest island on the west coast of the Americas? The west coast is, of course, over there. What island's the biggest? I guessed Catalina for the wine mixer. I don't know if it's right or not. And that is the end of our toss-up category, and that means that we will go to one final break. We will tally up the scores, and then we will do our Hail Mary question. We'll be back right after that to explain the Hail Mary question. Please be sure to send in your answers for the previous round. We will tally up your scores, and then we'll be able to bring it on home.
In case you were wondering how we spent that last break, we all stared at a cookie and dared each other to eat it, and then no one did. Now it's time to move on to our Hail Mary question. If you don't know how the Hail Mary question works, we take what your current score is, we chop it in half. If you get the question right, you get that half added on to your score. If you get it wrong, you don't get it removed. I'm going to keep explaining this in different ways until I run out of ways to explain how we add 50% of your score to your current score. So if the question is what's 1 plus 1 and you answer 2 and you have 10 points, congrats, you now have 15 points. If you answer hamburger, you now still have 10 points. No harm, no foul. Just a fun, th chuck it, throw it down far. Aaron Rodgers is not going to be the Packers quarterback in two years. Jordan Stop Love. <laughs> Jordan Love. Now let's move on to the actual Hail Mary, Hail la 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 la, the actual Hail Mary question, and it is... Pride of America, owned by Norwegian Cruise Lines, was the first new cruise ship registered in the United States in over 50 years because she doesn't leave American waters. Her port of registry is in what U.S. state? Again, what U.S. state is the Pride of America registered in? The first cruise ship registered in the U.S. in 50 years. You have 30 seconds. Chuck it down far. Shardy recently hissed at me, informing me that we've been getting some questions about what is this thing? Why is it here? Is it here for any reason? Oh, what? Oh, they can't see it? Okay. Well, what is what is this thing? What's this metal thing by the TV? Why is it here? I'll tell you what it is. It's my comedic foil. We're going to go to a quick break to tally up the final scores. We'll be back with the answers to the fifth round and tell you who is the winner of this week's edition of Fast Facts Live. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Ah, 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 sorry, I'm practicing my yells for auditioning for the next Jurassic Park movie. I think I'm, I think the keyboard that we used to control the iPad just died. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I have to, I'm going to lean forward now. We're going to get real close. Am I out of focus? Am I even on screen? It's on autofocus. Hey there, boys and girls. Let's go through the answers <laughs> in Fast Facts Live. Ah, well, I do. Round five, the answers for oh, toss-up. Hold on, hold on. I was distracted by you being close to the camera. All right. We run a tight ship here. <laughs> a tight ship registered in the, the state of this Wisconsin. This is the sloppiest show <laughs> we've ever done. <laughs> it's only episode four. What's a group of flamingos called? That answer is a flamboyance. A flamboyance of flamingos, which honestly, it's fitting. Question number two, Boeing Air Transport also hired flight attendants who were registered in what profession? That profession is nursing, because you know what they say, if somebody passes out on a flight, you got to nurse them back to health. There you go. I've been told to lean left. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's good. As we move on to question number three, the first NBA licensed video game was released in 1989 and was titled Lakers vs. Blank and the NBA Playoffs. 
who was the other team? Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics. Not Celtics, like one of my cousins once pronounced it. I don't know why. Question number four. Which international airport in the U.S. has regularly scheduled flights to Area 51? And that answer is, of course, McCarran International Airport, Las Vegas. Las, as the parentheses say. And question number five. What is the largest island on the west coast of the Americas? If you said Coney Island, look at a map. No, the answer is Vancouver Island. And if you're thinking, ah, it's an island, that was my reaction too. And now let's go to the Hail Mary question and reveal the answer for that. The Pride of America, owned by Norwegian Cruise Lines, was the first new cruise ship registered in the U.S. in over 50 years because she doesn't leave American waters. Her port of registry is what state? I said Kansas. It wasn't Kansas. The answer is Hawaii, baby. That's right. It's Hawaii. And now you know what it's time for. It's time for everybody's favorite time. What? are the scores so charty if you would please hand me our Did you sort it by scores? i'm back can't charty couldn't hand it to me yet her snake hair didn't hiss enough nah i'm a professional host I'm back in focus. Am I in focus? Okay, let's go through the scores. Well, mm, well, one team got zero. Yikes. Okay, so going through the scores from bottom to top, we will, will have something surprising to show you at the end. But anyways, Team Coop, zero points. Big fan. Mama Bear holding strong with eight points. Good job. Gam Pops also with eight points. Good job. Chicken dinner was not a winner winner. Nine points. Uh, the Spanish Inquisition, you held strong with 11 points. Also tied at 11 points are Rizzo fangirls, operatives, and goats. So, you know, good enough job to you. With 12 points, we have E. Glacius. With 13 points, we have Spotted Cow. Also with 13 points is Written House. I don't know why how... Is is it not a real house? I don't understand. Uh, and Doc Sportello. Then hopping on up to 17 points, we have the realist McCoy, Jack McCoy from Law & Order. At 18 points, we have a tie with Turd Ferguson, former champions the Ronoids, two-thirds negative, Han Flying Solo, Desilu, and Anita's Prodigal Progeny. At 19 points, we have Quiz Cats, last week's champion. And Quiz Cats, I did not forget to send you the Certificate of Championsity. I forgot to make you the Certificate of Championsity. <laughs> I will do that this week. Uh, and then with 20 points, we have the governing board of the Anarchy Club. At 22 points, we have former champions, the Texas Tornadoes. And also at 22 points, we have the Cullowins. And then in a tie for first place, these two teams... Both got the Hail Mary question. Also, I forgot to say that. Turd Ferguson, you also got the Hail Mary question, so put that on your tombstone. Uh, let's see. The tie for first place, we have Ew, David, and Bambus, which means that we have a tiebreaker question, and it's in the PowerPoint, so you know what that means. I'm going to lean on forward. And with this tiebreaker question, it is, as always, whoever's closest only those two teams' answers. And our tiebreaker question is, what year did the Pride of America enter service? Price is right rules, closest without going over. Those two teams send it in. Get it on in. It's been 30 seconds. What are you doing? Send in your answers. Oh, okay. We have one answer. Oh, we have two. Charty just signaled to me that we got the answers. Ah, oh, here we go. Ew, David, you answered 1999. Brambus, you answered 2004. The correct answer is... 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 2005. Congratulations to Brambus. You are this week's fast facts live champion and you are the first ever individual 
Fast Facts Live champion. I've been saying Brambus. Wait, hold, it's oh. Bambus. Hold on. How are they? Oh, how are they the first individual? There is only one person on this team. Oh, we okay. have been given knowledge that this is one person playing alone, and they are smarter than all of us combined. So congratulations, Bambus. You are the champions for this week of Fast Facts Live. We will send you your certificate of championosity once I make it, and we will also send the quiz cats yours for last week once I make it. I'm sorry. And that is the end of the episode. Of course, I have been Dan O'Keefe. Tom Hillmeyer, he has been the producer. Charty has been the cave troll keeping track of the scores. Thank you to everybody for playing. Please play again next week. We'll have some more questions, we'll have some more answers, and we'll have some more fun. Thank you for watching. Everybody have a good week and stay safe.